Howdy y'all, welcome back to the Ookie Old West. It's been a minute since our last update, and that's because Lauren and I have been out on the trail, traveling and collecting reference for this project. But now we're back headed east, and we're in Bisbee, Arizona, drawing Billy N. Bisbee. But you might want to call this painting Broken in Bisbee, with all the lead I break trying to make this thing happen. I like the red pencil, even though I'm pretty haphazard with my pencil bag, I toss it around without abandon, and the lead cracks inside those pencils more often than I'd like to admit. Now, I know what you're thinking, the area I'm in, I probably ought to be drawing something a little bit tombstone related, but I got a little disheartened with tombstone after visiting the city. It was probably my least favorite of the cow towns that we visited on this trip. And the truth is, this thing was always going to start with Billy. Now, this isn't going to be a finalized painting that you see today. What this is, this is a study. This is just a small version of a future painting. I'm just trying to work out a couple of little details here and there, shapes, positions, those kind of things. Oh, look at that. There's another one. Man, I cannot tell you how frustrating that is whenever that happens. So I sharpened up uh, one, two, three, and four. Hopefully that's enough to finish this thing out. So yeah, this thing was always going to start with Billy. You know? I've always known that I was going to portray Billy as this really young, jovial kid. Something about him just... It reminds me of a nephew that I lost, you know. So Billy was a young man who preferred moccasins to boots. Uh, he preferred a sombrero to a cowboy hat. He fully embraced Spanish heritage. He loved to dance the night away in the cantinas. I really hope I'm capturing some of that mischievous spirit that he had. Now what you just saw right there was the sketch, now I've got to transfer that to my arches. Uh, and since I don't have a light table, I was lucky enough to have a glass table in the Airbnb that we were renting. So what I did was I placed one of my camera lights up underneath the glass table and voila, instant light box. Another way you can do that is you can put your drawing behind uh, your arches, you can put it up on a window that's catching some sunlight or something like that and you can do like a little pencil sketch on the back side real quick to kind of make a transfer. There's a bunch of ways you can transfer it, but you know, makeshift light boxes are something I've been working on for years as a tattooer. So I'm adding a whole bunch of cactus right here. Uh, a lot of this landscape that you're seeing in the painting is very Arizona-inspired landscape. As we push further east into New Mexico, I'm sure I'll, I'll be a little bit more influenced by the New Mexican landscapes, but right now I'm in Arizona. I might be painting a New Mexico character, but it's definitely got an Arizona landscape in the back. And that's just one of the few things I'm talking about. It'll be a little more accurate in the final version of this painting. The landscape will be a little more true to New Mexico. The pistol will also be a little more true to Billy. Uh, since I started this sketch, I have photographed uh, the exact type of pistols that Billy preferred to carry. Um, and when I say pistols, I mean two because he was ambidextrous. And that's also why he's toting the pistol in his left hand in this painting. Uh, I'm going to do a number of paintings with Billy as the central character and you're probably going to see the pistol dance back and forth in his hand through the course of those. While most of the other characters that I'll paint you'll see the pistol dominantly in their right hand unless they're well known to be left-handed or ambidextrous as well. And that's our line work right there. Boom! Now that line work's done, uh, I took a little short break and then moved on to do the color for the painting. And started out with a coffee, but now I got this uh, unintentional Yeti advert happening in the video. I apologize for that. It is what it is, I guess. Maybe I should reach out and see if they want to partner up on it.
Now that technique right there, that's called spit shading. That's controlling the amount of water on the brush with your mouth. You can suck as much water out of that thing as you want to make the, to make the ink and water flow how you like. Usually works best with your clean brush, but I was just sucking on a dirty brush right there. That'll happen. I'm painting these uh, britches solid black right here. And to prepare for that, what I did was I used a gray line. I don't know if you can see it in these angles, but it makes for a pretty, uh, pretty unique trick. I like it. And now that I have the darkest area of the painting in, I'm gonna lay out the background too, because the central character is also gonna be the lightest area of the painting. And in order to control like exactly how light it gets, I want to do all the background around it so I, so I kind of have an idea of, of how bright he shines with no shading. Ranges right there. I love those little plateau tops. Now, since Billy loved to show off, I figured he'd have a pretty flamboyant sombrero, pretty nice holster. Pretty gangster serape. He'll probably be decked out like a, a, li a little more extravagant in the final version of this too. For sure there'll be color in the final paintings as well. I'm just really working out shapes in this one. Now what you see me doing right here is I'm working out like a dark gray for the moccasins. I want to get just the right shade of gray. It's not quite black, but it's not as light as I've been using either. Now I'm adding some water. I'm going to start working out the light grays for that cow skull. And it's going to move into even lighter grays for like, for his shirt. And since he's Billy the Kid, like I really wanted these clothes to kind of appear like, like they're falling off of him, you know? Like he's like, like a little kid playing dress up or something. But he has these huge hands because he's super strong and deadly. I mean, you know, despite being known as the kid, he was also known for his exceptional strength for his age. Hey, look at that. A couple more little details. Darken up that bandana right there. Rosie up his cheeks a bit. Hey, voila. Meet Kid Antrim. Quick little couple hour study. <laughs> 